Did you know that Dark Cloud 3 was formally announced by Level 5 back in 2003? How about Dark Cloud 3's mysterious main characters never before seen? We even reached out to Level 5 staff members to discuss what went into the design process and what eventually became of their work on Dark Cloud 3. The results will shock you. Learn about all of this and more in the Dark Cloud 3 Iceberg Investigation. Hey there, welcome to the Dark Cloud Compendium. I'm your host, Tenon Castle, and this is a Dark Cloud 3 Dark Cloud Iceberg. Now, some of you may be wondering, Hidden Castle, how do you do an iceberg on a game that doesn't even exist? Well, my friends, with a bit of Dark Cloud Compendium magic, anything is possible. Before we get ahead of ourselves, hey, if you enjoy Dark Cloud content, give this video a subscribe and consider joining the channel. And if you learned something new, leave a like. If you didn't learn anything new at all, leave a dislike guilt-free. Before I get ahead of myself, this video is divided into two segments. One half is a dark cloud iceberg, spitfire facts, faster than lightning. The other half is a dark cloud 3, deep dive investigation, unraveling the mysteries of dark cloud 3. With that being said, let's isolate ourselves within the dark cloud 3, dark cloud iceberg, starting right now. If you want to help support the preservation of Dark Cloud Lost Media and creation of Dark Cloud Deep Dive videos, feel free to check out my Patreon over at patreon.com slash hiddencastle. Patrons even get to get their names listed in the end credits. Without your help, this channel just wouldn't be possible. Thank you to my patrons. Rumors of Dark Cloud 3 after the release of Dark Cloud 2 Dark Chronicle, fans from all around the world were eagerly anticipating what would come next from Level 5's flagship Georama RPG series. Now, they say there's a bit of truth in every legend, and the third Dark Cloud game was indeed announced by Level 5. Before we get to that announcement made by Level 5, I think it's important to go through some of the rumors that were spread prior to the announcement made by Level 5, and even and afterwards, too, the Bay of Dreams and rumor mills were working full force with Dark Cloud 3. All around the world, it seemed like every few months you'd hear reports and rumors in Italian and Spanish magazines, American websites, breaking the news on Dark Cloud 3 rumors. The earliest printed rumor that I can find came in the July 2006 issue of Italian PlayStation magazine, PS Mania issue 63, where they initially reported on a rumor rumor of Dark Cloud 3 being developed exclusively for the PS3 using a new cloud engine and would release in 2009. However, all the rumors and speculation came to a boiling point in the year of 2012, when hundreds of Dark Cloud fans all came together and emailed Kotaku video game journalist Steven Tatillo, bombarding him with requests to personally make Dark Cloud 3. What does Steven Tatillo have to do with producing Dark Cloud 3? This confusion came when Tatillo interviewed Level 5 back in 2009, which somehow led to the online community asking Tatillo to personally make the game. He was frustrated enough to write two separate articles venting said frustration to a crowd of Georama Star fans. How does this make sense? Stay classy, Internet. Level 5's Dark Cloud 3 Announcements Now that we got that out of the way, this leads us to the next fact on a mysterious iceberg, and that's Dark Cloud 3's formal announcement made by Level 5. Let it be known, where Kotaku drops the ball, the Dark Cloud Compendium delivers. With that being said, if you're not subscribed to the channel, what are you doing? Hit that subscribe button, and if you can give the video a like, that would be appreciated, as that's the only way YouTube will put this channel out there and allow this niche channel 
channel to grow. The Dark Cloud community is the most passionate community out there. Let's show our passion together. Dark Chronicle initially released in Japan in late November 2002 and worldwide the following year in 2003. To critical and commercial acclaim, many waited with bated breath for what's to come for the Dark Cloud series. Days became months, and months became years, and those years quickly became decades. However, did you know that Dark Cloud 3 was actually announced back in 2003, when Level 5 completed their development development on the initial release of Dark Chronicle in Japan. Many fans don't realize that they immediately began developing the next Dark Cloud game, Dark Cloud 3. This even got as far as being announced in a Dark Chronicle Japanese art book. However, this version of Dark Cloud 3 gradually evolved into something that we all know, something that we may have even played. I'm gonna save that surprise to later on in the iceberg, you won't believe it. But what exactly did Level 5 say? Let's read through their announcement together. Message for Dark Fans It's already been half a year since Dark Chronicle was released for sale. Up until now, we received a lot of responses from the players. Trial and error is an essential part in game creation, but with Dark Chronicle, I think we've been able to provide an answer to both the wishes of the users and our own line of thinking. This is a hasty message, but Sony Computer Entertainment and Level 5 are planning a new release. This might be a sequel to Dark Chronicle, or a successor, or it might become an entirely new work. I can't tell you anything official yet, but I believe that not long from now, the time will come when we will proudly say this is the next world that Level 5 created. Until that time, please keep supporting us. Level 5 founder and Dark Cloud creator, Akihiro Hino the protagonists of Dark Cloud 3. In the next Dark Cloud announcement found in the Dark Chronicle art book, it briefly teased Dark Cloud 3. We can see two mysterious characters obscured by the shadowed silhouettes of time, leaving many fans to wonder just who were these characters. This mystery went unsolved for decades, the unshadowed versions of these characters being relegated as lost media, that is, until now. Unbeknownst to many, these missing protagonists of Dark Cloud 3 were surprisingly found in Rogue Galaxy's art book, as we can see Dark Cloud 3's protagonist here in various designs of what would become Jaster, solidifying the fact that Dark Cloud 3 and Rogue Galaxy are intrinsically linked. We could see that the design of Dark Cloud 3's protagonist looks like a combination of what came before. Elements of previous heroes like Tone and Max went into this beta design before he evolved into Jaster. And you're not gonna believe the reason why Dark Cloud 3 shifted into Rogue Galaxy. I gotta say, Castle Maniacs, looking at Dark Cloud 3's early protagonist is like looking at a history lost to time. Operation Atla Operation Atla was the first notable fan movement made within the Dark Cloud community all the way back in the late 2000s, and they were absolute trailblazers when it came to giving Dark Cloud an online media presence on social media. The goal of this group was to prove to Level 5 and Sony that there was indeed an active fan base for these games, and that we'd love to play a new Dark Cloud game. The Dark Cloud Compendium the Dark Cloud Compendium is a YouTube channel founded in 2019 which is dedicated to preserving Dark Cloud Lost Media, development history, in addition to spotlighting the most obscure information and trivia about our favorite RPGs. This channel was created by Hidden Castle to help keep the Dark Cloud series relevant and support the Dark Cloud community. DarkCloud3.title Hidden deep within the files of Rogue Galaxy lies some very mysterious early beta files that go unused. Files that relate to Dark Cloud 3. We can see an unused Rogue Galaxy title screen which is found in the menu folder of both the Japanese and North American version, which is labeled by level 5 as DC3 title. 
dot image. In addition to Rogue Galaxy's title screen being written in Dark Cloud styled font, we can see that the third game was referred to as Dark Chronicle Rogue Galaxy, in addition to this file also being labeled as DC3 title. Now these were title screens used in the era of Rogue Galaxy initially being Dark Cloud 3. What's interesting is that this can mean that level 5 were intending for the Dark Chronicle name to remain, whereas Rogue Galaxy would act as a subtitle to their new space opera adventure, all hidden away deep in the game files. Dark Cloud 3 Batman Connection Voice acting in the Dark Cloud series have had a very interesting history together, as Dark Cloud 2 surprisingly featured an all-star voice cast. To lend their vocal talents to these unique Dark Cloud characters, these voice actors made a name for themselves working on entertainment properties such as Star Wars, multiple Disney series, but more importantly, Batman from DC Comics. Previously in Dark Cloud 2, we had Max being voiced by Scott Menville, the voice of Robin from Teen Titans. The star power doesn't stop there. Emperor Griffin was voiced by none other than the Joker and Luke Skywalker himself, Mark Hamill. Now, we know that Dark Cloud 3 evolved into Rogue Galaxy. The beta version of Dark Cloud 3's protagonist evolved into Rogue Galaxy's protagonist, Jaster. And who was Jaster voiced by? None other than Will Friedel, who is best known for being the voice of Terry McGinnis, Batman Beyond. This means that in the Dark Cloud series, we got both the Cape Crusader's Boy Wonder, Nemesis, and the same JRPG, Life is Poetry, as Terry McGinnis. Batman Beyond was a spiritual successor to the original Batman, the same way that Rogue Galaxy became a spiritual successor of Dark Cloud 3. Steve's Role in Dark Cloud 3 When we look at the shadowed protagonists of Dark Cloud 3, the male character evolving into Jaster, and the female character being connected to Kasala, as we can see her here in the Rogue Galaxy art book, this would mean that Dark Cloud 3's characters were largely carried over into Rogue Galaxy. Level 5 surprised Dark Cloud fans when Steve made his reappearance into Rogue Galaxy as a full-on playable party member. Now Steve has always felt like an unofficial party member in the first Dark Cloud game, so it's great to see him as a fully-fledged playable character and party member in what became of Dark Cloud 3, Rogue Galaxy. Now Dark Cloud 3 is a very niche topic within the realm of JRPGs, as there's very few material of Dark Cloud 3 out there or released by level 5 themselves, but level 5 did actually release a beta battle theme for Dark Cloud 3. Our answer surprisingly lies in the international version of Dark Cloud. When developing the international version of Dark Cloud, they included a boss fight that was never seen in the Japanese version of the game, the Dark Knight Pendragon. And this boss fight used a beta musical theme from Dark Cloud 2, as Dark Chronicle's initial Japanese release was being developed as Dark Cloud is being localized for international markets. So level 5 figured it'd be more fitting and perhaps cost effective to use the beta battle theme from Dark Chronicle as the boss theme for the Dark Knight Pendragon. When listening, you can tell that the Dark Knight Pendragon's musical theme was originally a draft for the battle theme of what would become Dark Chronicle. Now that we know that series composer Tomohito Nishihura would often develop music for future games, in the previous game's sound font, as we heard of Pendragon's battle theme from Dark Cloud being developed in the sound font, being Dark Chronicle's beta battle theme, nearly 20 years after the release of Rogue Galaxy's official soundtrack, fans learned that Level 5 sneaked a Dark Cloud 3 musical track 
in an extra section labeled as Braveheart's early version. For a moment in time, we can hear what Dark Cloud 3 was initially going to sound like before it evolved into Rogue Galaxy. Rogue Galaxy's battle theme done in the era of Dark Cloud 3 developments. Let's check it out. Mysterious Launcher Files When making these massive one hour long Dark Cloud Icebergs, my goal is making sure that I can give you some solid answers in solving Dark Cloud Mysteries. However, this topic faded away into obscurity long, long ago. When exploring Rogue Galaxy's files, there lies several launcher files referencing Dark Cloud 3. For those that are not aware, a launcher file typically launches other programs and starts them up. Now it goes even deeper as the launcher menu.cfg and launcher menu 3.cfg refer to the game as DC3 project. Now what exactly did it launch into? Perhaps a Dark Cloud 3 beta? It's hard to tell. However, this name was altered by level 5 on November 28, 2005 when they officially changed the title to RG project, marking the transition to Rogue Galaxy. Just how long were they using the Dark Cloud 3 name? And what did those Dark Cloud 3 launcher files boot into? Sadly, we will never know. Cars, battle axes, and blasters too. It seems that Dark Cloud 3 was taking a bit more of a mature approach, preferring to age with its audience, as we know that Dark Cloud 3 would have been set in the distant future through referencing the next Dark Cloud announcement made by Akihiro Hino in 2003. Interestingly, found alongside the DC3.image files were several unused icons showing off a dark and gritty style in items such as battle axes realistic blasters, and vehicles too, all while Dark Cloud 3 was being developed. Many of you are thinking, myself included, vehicles and Dark Cloud, that just doesn't make sense. What's funny is that this isn't the first time that vehicles were removed from the Dark Cloud series, as Dark Cloud 2 had a vehicle segment that was cut from the game, and we also had blasters with Max and Osman. However, they didn't look nearly as realistic as this. It seems as if the developers and artists really wanted to push the boundary even further before pulling the brakes and reverting to traditional fantasy and sci-fi elements. Going back to fantasy and sci-fi elements was the right call. Dark Cloud 3 Hidden in Dragon Quest VIII Many of you are aware that Level 5 wasn't just responsible for creating the iconic Dark Cloud series, but they were trusted by Enix to handle development of the 8th installment of the Dragon Quest series. At the time, this was a big deal as Level 5 was still a brand new studio, and for Enix to hand them the keys to the castle like that was unheard of, but it was all due to their work on Dark Cloud and Dark Chronicle. However, did you know that if you were to explore the files of Dragon Quest, 
podcast, you can find reference to Dark 3, as some of the files are labeled as Dark 3 slash DC3 underscore sound. The reason for this was that the prototyping for the Japanese Dragon Quest VIII was being done as the team was busy on the Japanese production of Dark Chronicle wrapping up the project. The technology present in Dragon Quest VIII is based off of the Dark Engine. Dark Cloud 3 Magazine Rumor Origins when creating this Dark Cloud Iceberg, we presented you with a lot of facts to not only prove that Dark Cloud 3 existed, but also touch upon what happened with that project. But let's flash back to the very first point we made on this Dark Cloud Iceberg. You remember that Italian PlayStation Magazine issue. It specifically mentioned the Kumo engine, or Cloud engine by name, which also went by the Dark engine as well. That name, the engine that Dark Cloud was built off of, was not public knowledge in the 2000s, so that report had to come from a valid industry insider. But that begs the question, what exactly did they see at level 5 in 2006 that they thought was Dark Cloud 3 running on PS3? As we know that PlayStation 2's Dark Cloud 3 evolved into Rogue Galaxy. Well, we might have our answer. In the American Strategy Guide for Rogue Galaxy, they surprisingly had a question and answer feature with the man himself, Aki. Hiro Hino by Level 5 fans, courtesy of Hardcore Gaming Magazine. In this Rogue Galaxy American Strategy Guide by Double Jump Publishing in 2006, user Nosi asked, Any chance for Dark Cloud 3? To which Hino replied, Actually, among the titles that we're currently working on, there's currently one title that contains elements that derive from the Dark Cloud series. We can't say anything more about that though. End quote. Looking at our timeline, White Knight Chronicles later made its global reveal in Tokyo Game Show 2006. So it's very likely that Sony insiders, or maybe a member of the press, saw footage of White Knight Chronicles in its GeoNet online georama system and mistakenly leaked it to the press like PS Mania as Dark Cloud 3. It all comes together right now. But sadly, it's not Dark Cloud 3. Dark Cloud 3 after PS3 There's very few instances of Dark Cloud 3 being brought up officially in interviews by the press. It's always been a project that's clouded in a shroud of dark mystery. However, Hino was interviewed in 2008 when the interviewer curiously asked about the topic of Dark Cloud 3. It seems like Hino accidentally mentioned that would come after PS3. We'll unpack this statement later on in the iceberg, but here's a clip for context. To Dark Cloud sequel. Right now, we are working on Shirokishi, so at this time, we don't have any plans to make a Dark Cloud 3, but uh, every time we speak to media, uh, or foreign media, uh, that is something that everybody asks for. So it's something where uh, may maybe perhaps we have to make something, but that'll come after PS3, or I mean, Shirokishi. So what I, what I will say, in regards to Shirokishi is that we have, uh, we're going to have a dark, uh, a character from the Dark Cloud series appear in the game. And we feel that fans of the Dark Cloud series will enjoy some of the functionalities that we are planning for the game. Gamescom 2017 Incidents the Gamescom 2017 incident refers to when Dark Cloud creator Akihiro Hino revealed the truth about the fate of Dark Cloud 3. Journalists from Polygon asked him what it would take to see a new game in the Dark Cloud series, to which he responded, There has been a lot of requests and voices to create Dark Cloud 3 or some form of Dark Cloud. That IP is co-owned or managed by Sony Computer Entertainment, so it's not something that we can do or act upon on our own. And there we have it, the long-suspected truth finally comes out. 
Dark Cloud, spiritual successor. When promoting Nino Kuni 2, Akihiro Hino discussed the Jirama system's grand comeback in the game, giving us the first glimpse of a new generation of city building RPGs. Hino stated with the improvements and how interactive they made Nino Kuni's Jirama system, they very well could make a spin off based off of the Jirama system alone. Let's take a listen. Es handelt sich nicht um Städtebau oder so etwas. Es ist etwas Aufregenderes, Dynamischeres. Und ich bin voll motiviert, diesen speziellen Teil des Spiels zu entwickeln, der sogar als eigenes Spin-Off-Spiel veröffentlicht wird. With that being said, our Dark Cloud 3 Iceberg Investigation is nowhere near done, not even close. But before we begin any further, I want to know what you thought of the Iceberg portion of the Dark Cloud 3 Iceberg Adventure that we've been going on together. What have you learned for the first time? For me, I thought the most interesting thing was that Dark Cloud 3 was under our nose the whole time. After all those years of requesting and waiting year after year and having that disappointment, it seems like it was there, and it's poetic in a sense because it did release on the PS2. I can't imagine how Dark Cloud would be in the modern era with microtransactions and DLC packs and all the ways that modern gaming has really taken the fun out of video games. I don't really see Dark Cloud being able to survive, but then again, you have games like Minecraft that are currently dominating and are able to really evolve into something different with, you know, Minecraft education and VR. Could that have been Dark Cloud? Could Dark Cloud 3 still come out today? I think it's possible under a very unique set of circumstances. As we know, Level 5 did close down their main branch of operation here in America, but from what I can gather, they were really just responsible for the mobile titles. However, the biggest standpoint has always been Jim Ryan, the main person in charge of Sony Computer Entertainment of America, and his hatred for Japanese gaming. Whether it be closing down the historic Japan Studio, the very first Sony gaming studio funded at PlayStation. Now this studio was responsible for all of your childhood favorite games from Ape Escape to Parappa the Rapper to Dark Cloud, Legend of the Dragoon, Ico. The games just keep piling up and when they shut that studio down it felt like they were really taking a step back away from the Japanese aspect of PlayStation. Which is heartbreaking to a lot of PlayStation 2 connoisseurs like myself that see that era of PlayStation as the absolute peak of that company's gaming history. Jim Ryan famously went on to say that nobody wants to play PS2 games, that emulation, that backwards compatibility is a waste because the games just look ugly and no one would ever want to play that. Again, these corporate suits are out of touch with what we, the customers, really want. And I'm happy to say that he's finally gone, so maybe, just maybe, negotiations can take place for Dark Cloud 3. I don't know, maybe I'm going on a tangent here, but in a world where a numbered Dark Cloud 3 would have released, not Rogue Galaxy, a numbered Dark Cloud 3, it would have been interesting seeing that series progress over time. Would you rather have two games that are amazing, your Dark Cloud and Dark Cloud 2, your Chrono Trigger and Chrono Cross, or would you rather have a series make a million games and slowly fall down the drain? It's all hard to say. This is what we think about. Now these are the thoughts of a madman who's been contemplating Dark Cloud 3 for the better half of almost 20 years, but it all comes down to the fact that Rogue Galaxy did actually ship, and it contained many elements of what Dark Cloud 3 was intended to be, all in a different sort of packaging. And it's a game that should be appreciated in its own right. It's a game that really pushed the PS2 to its utmost limits visually, graphically, from a technical perspective. It's a marvel, a landmark title for the PlayStation 2, and it doesn't get the credit that it deserves. So if you actually watched this video up until now, and you haven't played Rogue Galaxy, it's one of the greatest RPGs of all time. A space opera for the ages, one of the greatest RPGs of all time. And it carries on a lot of the spirit that Dark Cloud 3 maintained in its original pitch, with Dark Cloud 3's story and themes being largely carried over and making the transition. The only thing that was lost in the shuffle, really, 
was the Georama system, but we'll be getting into that in our Dark Cloud 3 investigation. So, if you learned something new, leave a comment. I really do enjoy reading them and leaving a heart on each and every comment. And if you enjoy what we do here on the Dark Cloud Compendium, consider subscribing to stay up to date with all things Dark Cloud. And hey, I'd be a broken record, but many thanks to my patrons for making this video possible, and this channel for that matter. If it wasn't for the support of the patrons and viewers alike, this channel just wouldn't exist. I want to say thank you to you, the viewer who's watching right now. I've been creating these Dark Cloud Icebergs for the past three years of my life, and believe it or not, these one hour long videos really do take a lot out of me. Um, I work on them throughout the year in conjunction to producing our monthly uploads, and the Dark Cloud Compendium is really a one-man show. I write, produce, script, edit, voice, everything. I do everything on my own, and juggling both the one-hour-long videos, at the end of the day, you're going to be making something that's going to help make people happy and bring some enjoyments throughout their day, and we can share a passion in Dark Cloud. It makes me happy to say that we're able to complete our Dark Cloud Iceberg Trilogy, giving an iceberg to Dark Cloud, Dark Cloud 2, Dark Chronicle, and even the never-before-released Dark Cloud 3 with the Dark Cloud 3 Iceberg. Thank you for sticking with me. If you haven't watched those videos, I hope you go back and check those other icebergs out in addition to the rest of the Dark Cloud Compendium. Each of the Dark Cloud one hour icebergs presented on this channel were made with love. I guess you can say they were personalized. It's been called the biggest Dark Cloud party of the year, the one hour long Dark Cloud iceberg, and some of you may be wondering, now that the Dark Cloud 3 iceberg is done, where do we go next with Dark Cloud icebergs? I do have a plan on how to progress further, but we'll see where that goes come December. But that's enough talk. Let's get into the investigation of Dark Cloud 3. Hello, and welcome to the Dark Cloud Digital Compendium. My name's Hidden Castle, and I'll be your guide. Dark Cloud 3 has long since been the dream of many Dark Cloud fans from all around the world. We've been waiting for what seems like an eternity for a new numbered title into our favorite Georama, time-traveling, RPG series. However, what many don't know is that hidden in the pages of an officially licensed Dark Chronicle Japanese art book is an announcement of Dark Cloud 3's production. This video will focus on that Dark Cloud 3 announcement, what happened to it, and unpacking its significance with other titles in Level 5's catalog. With that being said, let us begin. Dark Cloud 2 received critical praise from critics all around the world, notably scoring a 35 out of 40 from the reputable Japanese games magazine Famitsu. This was a big win for Level 5, as Dark Cloud was expected to be a big deal in Japan. Instead, it received middling reviews. The financial and critical success that Dark Cloud 2 and Dark Chronicle received showed that there was indeed a demand for more Dark Cloud worldwide. Dark Cloud 2 satiated the appetites of many fans and made them anticipate what would come next. This brings us to the topic of Dark Cloud 3. Today, many years have passed with no release of Dark Cloud 3. Level 5 have gone on record and mentioned Dark Cloud 3 in many interviews throughout the years. Cool. In regards to Dark Cloud sequel, right now we are working on the show HD, so at this time we don't have any plans to make a Dark Cloud 3, but uh, every time we speak to media, uh, or the foreign media, uh, that is something that everybody asks for. So it's something where uh, maybe, maybe perhaps we have to make something, but that'll come after PS3, or I mean, Shoshi. So what, what I will say 
and make our situation to you is that we have, uh, we're going to have a dark, uh, a character from the Dark Cloud series appear in the game. And we feel that fans of the Dark Cloud series will enjoy some of the functionalities that we are planning for the game. What many are not aware of is that Dark Cloud 3 was indeed a reality at one point in time. In fact, Level 5 even announced it in a Japanese Dark Chronicle art book. This art book was released in 2003. Dark Cloud 3's announcement was conveyed through a message. This message has been translated, Message for Dark Fans. It's been half a year since Dark Chronicle was released for sale. Up until now, we received a lot of response from the players. Trial and error is an essential part in game creation, but with Dark Chronicle, I think we've been able to provide both an answer to both the wishes of the users and our own line of thinking. This is a hasty message, but Actually, Sony Computer Entertainment and Level 5 are planning a new release. This might be a sequel to Dark Chronicle, or a successor, or it might become an entirely new work. I can't tell you anything official yet, but I believe that not long from now, the time will come when we will be able to proudly say that this is the next world that Level 5 has created. Until that time, please keep supporting us. Dark Cloud creator and director, Akihiro Hino. In addition, the planet Jiraika was named after Jurak, the living tree who appeared in both Dark Cloud games. In Dark Cloud 3, this idea was intended to be carried over. Interplanetary exploration was the key feature that the team were considering for Dark Cloud 3 as Georama would have taken place on a planetary scale. However, the team decided to dial this back so that they can place a greater emphasis and attention to the exploration, gameplay, and plot. The weapon build-up system that Dark Cloud was known for would have made a return in Dark Cloud 3. This was eventually utilized in Rogue Galaxy, as Dark Cloud 3's plot was retooled into Rogue Galaxy. Perhaps this was Level 5's way of having closure on the series, but on their own terms, as all three games have the same core DNA and similar visions. When translating the caption above the artwork, it states that, quote, we were able to get a hold of concept art for the next installment of the Dark Thought series explicitly stating that this was indeed concept art for the next installment of the Dark Cloud series, Dark Cloud 3. Akihiro Hino, the president of Level 5 and creator of the Dark Cloud series, gave us his hasty message. He stated that, quote, This might be a sequel to Dark Chronicle, or a successor, or it might become an entirely new work. The caption above the artwork and Hino's statement they both paint a similar picture. There's truth within each statement, so let's unpack them together. Keep in mind that this was an officially licensed Dark Cloud 2 Dark Chronicle art book, meaning that Level 5 would have had the final say of what got into the publication, such as the photos and their captions. The fact that Hino, the president of the company, gave his statement for the art book speaks volumes about the care and dedication that was put into the art book's creation. Going back to the caption above the artwork, it states that this was early art of Dark Cloud 3. Everything in this art book was accurate and meticulously curated and picked by level 5. If the statement that this early piece of Dark Cloud 3 artwork wasn't accurate at the time of publication, then level 5 wouldn't have included it within this art book. When you take the evidence found on this page, from Hino's message to Dark Cloud fans to the caption printed above by Level 5. They were beginning pre-production. At the same time, Hino did bring up the possibility of this not only being a sequel to Dark Chronicle, or it could become an entirely new work. 
such as how Rogue Galaxy was a new IP by both Sony and Level 5. This art book was published in the middle of 2003, and Rogue Galaxy was released in December 2005. So in terms of game development and pre-production, the dates certainly match up. Interestingly, the city seen in the background of the next Star Cloud announcement matches Rogue Galaxy's planet of Zerard. The connection between Dark Cloud 3's announcement and Rogue Galaxy. Here is some additional concept art of the city of Zerard. Now if you note at the bottom, the copyright date is noted as 2003. The same year as its next Dark Cloud announcement. Dark Cloud 3 was once in production and even officially announced by Level 5. But as Akihiro Hino stated, it had the potential to evolve into something entirely new, further solidifying the connection between this artwork that was stated as being Dark Cloud 3 art and Rogue Galaxy, among other connections that we will be touching on in a few moments. It's important to note that Dark Cloud 2 was in itself a spiritual sequel to the first Dark Cloud, as it was titled Dark Chronicle in Japan. The name Dark Cloud 2 was a North American localization change. Akihiro Hino told us that this game may carry Dark Cloud's name, hence the next DC title on the top of the image, or it may evolve into something new, like how Dark Chronicle was a spiritual sequel to the first Dark Cloud, but ultimately bared some resemblance to the Dark series. So, Rogue Galaxy being a spiritual sequel to both Dark Cloud and Dark Chronicle makes a lot of sense. When asking my sources on the matter, they stated that the artwork it was indeed part of the pre-production material that was created for Dark Cloud 3 before it evolved into Rogue Galaxy. Development on Dark Cloud 3 got as far as a team creating a basic outline of the story, gameplay mechanics, concept art for the world and characters before the team decided that they did not want to be a studio that was known for only making Dark Cloud games and they wanted to do something with less emphasis on Georama and more focus on story and exploration. What Akihiro Hino stated about how Sony Computer Entertainment and Level 5 were collaborating is important as it dispels the rumor that Sony did not want Dark Cloud 3. This quote shows that Sony were more than willing to provide the funding and publish another Dark Cloud game. They gave the project the green lights. However, throughout the years, Level 5 had become quite the reputable company in the industry, and they were not the small company that they were when they started back in 1998. Ultimately, it was Level 5 who made the decision to change the project into something new. Sony decided to trust their judgment as the studio Level 5 grew exponentially and each game they produced proved to be a financial success. They gave them their creative freedom. This had a trickle-down effect on their initial work on Dark Cloud 3, as much of their initial work can still be seen in Rogue Galaxy. This is due to how the same team that worked on Dark Cloud 1, Dark Cloud 2, and the pre-production work on Dark Cloud 3 also worked on Rogue Galaxy. Many aspects of Dark Cloud 3's production carried on to Rogue Galaxy, such as its science fiction setting, its emphasis on exploration and planets. In addition, the planet Jurika was named after Jurak, the living tree, who appeared in both Dark Cloud games. In Dark Cloud 3, this idea was intended to be carried over Interplanetary exploration was the key feature that the team were considering for Dark Cloud 3, as Georama would have taken place on a planetary scale. However, the team decided to dial this back so that they can place a greater emphasis and attention to the exploration, gameplay, and plot 
The weapon build-up system that Dark Cloud was known for would have made a return in Dark Cloud 3. This was eventually utilized in Rogue Galaxy. Dark Cloud 3's plot was retooled into Rogue Galaxy. Perhaps this was Level 5's way of having closure on the series, but on their own terms, as all three games have the same core DNA and similar visions. When reflecting on the Dark Cloud teaser that was featured in the Dark Chronicle Japanese art book, I asked our sources if they could elaborate on this more. Specifically, if this art belonged to Rogue Galaxy or another project entirely. Their answer was quite interesting, as our sources stated that this was indeed a conceptual image of Dark Cloud 3 before it shifted into becoming Rogue Galaxy. At this time, the team at Level 5 were considering if they wanted to continue the Dark Cloud series or if they wanted to go in a new direction with a new intellectual property. Our sources added by saying that Dark Cloud 2's sales and reviews were so impressive that this made Level 5 get to work on Dark Cloud 3 as soon as possible. It was only during the pre-production phase that the team decided to experiment with new ideas that strayed from Dark Cloud's emphasis on Georama. This led to the team dropping the Dark Cloud name and having the project evolve into something entirely new. Level 5 are interested in developing another Dark Cloud game. This can be gleamed in a recent interview that took place in Gamescom 2017, where Akihiro Hino, the founder of Level 5 and creator of the Dark Cloud series as well as Rogue Galaxy, stated that he would love to work on another title in the Dark Cloud series, as they learned a lot from their experiences with Sony. However, he hinted that Level 5 and Sony had entered negotiations regarding Dark Cloud 3 in the past. He added by saying that he's not sure if anything is happening with Dark Cloud currently. He mentioned that he is interested in a revival, but it's complicated as Sony owns half of the IP. Level 5 now has control over all of their properties moving forward and that there is a higher chance of seeing older Level 5 owned video games, Professor Layton, or even more obscure titles like Jeanne d'Arc being featured on modern game consoles. What did Hino mean by this? Well, through analyzing all the sources that we introduced throughout this documentary, when Hino mentioned that Dark Cloud entered negotiations in the past, he is referring to how Sony greenlit Dark Cloud 3 back in 2003, but Level 5 chose to shift their work from Dark Cloud 3 into something entirely new. The question remains, does Dark Cloud 3 have a place in Level 5's current game library and company structure? When consulting my sources at Level 5, they told us that Dark Cloud never really left the company's mind, as many of the employees who were hired by the company wanted to work for Level 5 as they enjoyed the games that they developed, such as Dark Chronicle. As such, the Dark Cloud series gets brought up in company discussions fairly frequently, where it is discussed and fondly remembered, a number of staff that worked on Dark Cloud, Dark Chronicle, and Rogue Galaxy are still employed by Level 5, with many acting as mentors to teach their younger staff members. Level 5 still uses Dark Cloud graphics on their company advertising, calling it their maiden title. The general consensus among the employees is that they would be willing to work on another title in the Dark Cloud series. However, from a company standpoint, Level 5 would work on Dark Cloud if a few of their conditions are met by Sony. 
Working on Dark Cloud gave Level 5 their start in the industry, providing them with valuable experience, helped kickstart the company, and even landed them the deal to work on Dragon Quest VIII as Squaresoft saw Dark Cloud and recognized the potential that the studio had and handed them the rights to the biggest JRPG franchise. For Level 5, developing the Dark Cloud series for Sony highlighted the significance of owning the rights to their video games, as everything for Dark Cloud had to go through Sony which led to a lot of frustration and content being either reworked or cut entirely. Sony often had the final say. After their work on Dark Cloud, Level 5 made the financial juggernaut Yokai Watch, a series that rivals even Pokemon's popularity in Japan. In addition, the Yokai Watch film sold more tickets than Star Wars The Force Awakens in Japanese theaters. At this point, Star Wars was an iconic 40-year-old film series. Level 5 also launched their successful Inazuma 11 and Professor Layton series. The common thread that binds these three Level 5 series that we mentioned is that they're all multimedia powerhouses in Japan. Level 5's lucrative and rapid success with multimedia franchises influences Level 5 to focus their attention on creating or sustaining their multimedia franchises that have multiple streams of revenue as the company has seen a dramatic increase in their financial profits since their days spent on the Dark Cloud series with Sony. This can be seen in how Level 5 expanded and purchased other game companies and animation studios such as Kenji Inafune's Comcept Game Studio due to the extra revenue that their multimedia franchises generate. In a 2014 interview that Akihiro Hino conducted with the publication Next Rikunab, he was quoted as saying, Another key to success is to come up with a concept that won't be shaken. Behind the success of Yokai Watch is the development of cross-media items. We developed a cross-media approach in the order of comics, games, toys, and TV animation. That was what I was thinking from the planning stage, to share the blurring concept with anime and toys. That is the key to cross-media success. In short, Level 5 are far more likely to invest in a video game if it has the potential to be expanded into the realm of multimedia. As Hino stated in the quote that they often developed a cross-media approach in attempt to gain multiple forms of revenue, that is their key to success. In terms of a shared IP like Dark Cloud, this would mean that Sony and Level 5 would not only have to negotiate how to split the revenue made by any game sales, but also have to negotiate how the two companies would split the revenue made from anime, merchandise, movies, apparel, and other related products. As Level 5 always takes multimedia into consideration with their products. Because Dark Cloud is a shared IP, all these revenue streams would most likely have to be shared and divided in two between the two companies, Sony and Level 5. Today, Level 5 is a company that knows that they have what it takes to create a great multimedia video game that can transcend into the realm of multimedia franchises, even if that means leaving shared IP like Dark Cloud and Rogue Galaxy behind. Where does Sony fall into all this? Sony wanted another title in the Dark Cloud series, as the translated Dark Cloud 3 teaser illustrates that Sony was collaborating with Level 5, and they were to publish the project. This was back when the project was still being developed as Dark Cloud 3. This would mean that it was Sony's responsibility to cover the costs of development 
In return, this new numbered title in the Dark Cloud series would remain a PlayStation exclusive. Sony realized that the Dark Cloud series brought something unique to their console and sold very well in the West and Europe. In addition, the series was just beginning to reach a new audience in Japan with Dark Chronicles' success. This would mean that Sony went as far to give Dark Cloud 3 the green light back in 2003. But that project evolved into Rogue Galaxy. Ultimately, it was Level 5's call to move Dark Cloud 3 into a different direction. Sony listened to Level 5 as they were not the small startup company they once were. They grew and had gained experience, and Sony trusted their judgment as they had a solid track record. Today, Level 5 is a world-renowned studio that's focusing on making games that they have the sole ownership over and creating their own multimedia franchises. This leads to Level 5 being the sole owner of any revenue that's generated from the games sold and their multimedia endeavors. This contrasts their humble beginnings where they had to create a title with Sony's financial backing and lacked total creative freedom. Perhaps a new title in the Dark Cloud series is possible, given the right circumstances, as it seems that both companies who are involved are interested. And there we have it. We now know what became of Level 5's official Dark Cloud 3 announcement made all the way back in 2003. Throughout this video, we went over the evidence that ties this early Dark Cloud 3 announcement to Rogue Galaxy. It's like Akihiro Hino stated, this next Dark Cloud title had the potential to evolve into something entirely new. And it most certainly did, as Rogue Galaxy released in Japan in 2005 to positive reviews, and ended up becoming a distant relative to the Dark Cloud series, as it initially began development as Dark Cloud 3. When discussing with my sources at level 5, as well as reading what Hino stated in the past through various interviews with gaming websites and magazines, Level 5 seems like it's still willing to work on the Dark Cloud series. But sadly, it's no longer a priority, as they have their own intellectual properties to work on. And Sony initially funded Dark Cloud 3, which is important as it dispels a rumor that Sony didn't want to fund a new title into the Dark Cloud series, as Hino's statement explicitly says that they were working with Sony Computer Entertainment while the project was still Dark Cloud 3, before it evolved into Rogue Galaxy, due to the requests made by Level 5, as they wanted to try something new, and they had the trust of Sony to do so. An officially numbered Dark Cloud 3, or a reboot of the series, could still happen, as both parties are interested. Many thanks to the Level 5 employees who took the time to speak about their experiences regarding this announcement. It was an honor and we truly appreciate the insight after all these years. The purpose of this video was to collect all the information that we had on Dark Cloud 3 into one place. It's no surprise that this announcement went unnoticed for years by the global Dark Cloud community as it was made in a Japanese art book and language barriers held it back for almost 20 years. I think that this only underscores the importance of translating print media, as sometimes there are big announcements like this that become victim of language barriers and the passing of time. This video is made possible by amazing viewers like you and contributions from our generous patrons. Thank you! The World of the Compendium is a Patreon-supported show. These deep-dive videos would not be possible if not for the support of 
all my generous patrons. I'm forever grateful. Patrons are able to get a behind the scenes look with how these videos are created and get to help support the channel. With that being said, many thanks to my viewers and patrons, both new and old alike, for all the support. It's our combined passion for obscure RPGs that keeps this show going strong. The link to the Patreon can be found in the description below. Many thanks to my Compendium Chroniclers, GD Break, Waposa, Anna, Story Lover, Ryan Seven, Weeb Warrior. Many thanks to our Moon Sea Mega Supporters who have a message to the community. Actually, change of plans. Usually I'd reach out to the Moon Sea Mega Supporters, but seeing how this is a very special Dark Cloud Iceberg and the finale for a Dark Cloud trilogy, I wanted to thank them personally for the work that they've done for helping grow this channel. Many thanks to Moon Sea Mega Supporter GD Break for all of their support with the Dark Cloud Compendium. The generosity of the Moon Sea Mega Supporters really does go a long way in the preservation of Dark Cloud Lost Media. The other day I bought a Dark Cloud phone card that was never before documented that I'm very excited to go through and spotlight for us all. 